Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here today for our webinar on the QA Stereo Checker. Let me hide this so it's out of the way. Um, I'm sure that there's a few more people that are getting logged in at the moment. So we'll start with some, uh, we'll start, get this show on the road. Start with a little bit of house cleaning. So like I said, we're here to talk about our QA Stereo Checker today, which is Filmless QA, uh, mainly for the CyberKnife system. Uh, let's start with, you know, why, why are we here every day? These are some of my colleagues, in case you don't know me, I'm the person over here with the blue background. But really, why is it that we come to work each day or work from home each day, as the case may be these days? And we all know somebody who has had cancer. We've all been impacted by that. And we know how important it is for those patients to get the best treatment possible. So we at Standard Imaging work very diligently and very hard to make sure we're manufacturing and supporting you as the physicist doing an incredibly important job in the cancer care um, area, making sure that the patients have the best outcome that they can. So we're really here to partner with you to make sure you are having everything that you need to do a good, efficient job. So just a little bit of housekeeping. I am recording today's webinar. It'll be available um, a little bit late, you know, a little bit later, because my colleague who helps out with these things is on vacation at the moment. Um, if you do have questions, please enter them in the dialogue question box. I will take a look at those at the end of the presentation. Just a little bit here about standard imaging. Uh, we are based in Middleton, Wisconsin, which is a suburb of Madison. We have now been in business for 31 years. And while we had the humble beginnings of well chamber and electrometer, today we design and manufacture a full suite of QA products. Um, everything that you may need uh, in any area of your, your medical physics QA. And as for myself, I have now passed the threshold of 15 years at Standard Imaging and as such um, have been mainly in the sales team in one aspect or another, now part of our product management team. And one of the products under my purview happens to be, of course, our QA Stereo Checker. I just want to take a peek here and make sure that people are hearing me. There's no questions. Nope. Okay, good to go. So really, what is Stereo Checker? Um, it's the device here you see sitting on the couch. It is fast and easy to set up. It, as I said, it was designed with CyberKnife in mind. So it does align automatically using the target localization system. You don't have to manually manipulate the robot. Robot, You don't attach anything to the collimator housing. Tests are performed in clinical mode. So if something um, is an alert or error in clinical mode, you know that that would impact your patient treatments. Direct, direct relation, high speed, high resolution, 200 micron resolution, um, designed with therapists and physicists in mind. Um, therefore, it is portable and compact. So people often ask us, how do you decide to develop the products that you uh, bring to market? And, you know, it when we're looking at needs within the community, um, we worked with a, a clinical physicist on this and knowing that the existing methods for QA um, on the CyberKnife system, especially with the uh, newest version, the S7 or the M6 that added MLCs, they're still stuck with film. And that is probably a, an inefficient way of getting QA done quickly and generally requires the physicist. So, and also thinking about the fact that CyberKnife is a stereotactic machine, you really wanna think about, um, am I really satisfied with doing certain types of QA only quarterly when if there was a fast enough, efficient enough method, we could do it daily and be that much more uh, confident and sleep better at night, knowing that we're giving these high dose rates, um, hypofractionated treatments uh, in, in a good manner. Okay, why does that? 
So again, with film, one of the, the you know, there, there's the cost of film, the inconvenience of film, but there's also who is then ultimately doing the QA and time is money, as we all know. Um, so you can save some, you know, certainly save money in the amount of film that you're using, but really the fact that we've made this device and the software easy enough, um, simple enough for the therapist, uh, you know, that that is definitely a cost savings versus having the physicists uh, take their time to perform that QA and then they can focus instead on the things that, that may make a, a, a bigger impact or have, you know, the most impact um, on the patient treatment. So when you're thinking about stereo checker, what does it do for you? Quicker testing means great, you know, the more machine availability, uh, greater patient access, less staffing and consumable costs, quicker testing, um, knowing that you can trend your data means that you can be aware of issues, get repairs done outside of clinical hours. It's all about making sure that the, the machine is available to treat patients, have better patient outcomes, better patient surveys. And after the lockdown we have all been in, in the age of COVID, we know and have been hearing about the expanded need for uh, hypofractionated, so stereotactic uh, SBRT procedures. Uh, to get the throughput done faster, quickly, efficiently, and, and with great care. Um, so I'm going to talk a little, compare the current methods to what StereoChecker offers and how it's done with StereoChecker, and then we're going to go into taking a look at version 2.0 of the software. So currently, if you're going to do Iris QA, you have to attach something, you know, the bird cage to collimator head, it takes mm -hmm. up to two hours to complete and it's not done in clinical mode. Uh, with the stereo checker, you get it set up, it's doing the tar uh, you know, aligning using the target localization system. You can be done in as quick as five minutes. Um, you can detect uh, field size variations to 0.1 millimeter and you can analyze uh, all 11 clinically uh, used iris diameters in one operation. We do a batch analysis on that. Okay, um, when you're doing AQA, uh, again, you have a specialized phantom, you have to use film. Uh, the, the software that you used with analyzing this doesn't have the trending. Um, it doesn't use clinical pathways. There's uncertainty associated with uh, user variation in users. So again, with the stereo checker, since it's a simple setup and we've created that we work with you to come on site, get it installed and get those QA plans created, you know, we deliver that in the clinical mode. Again, we're checking things very, very quickly. We call it the Panda test because AQA, of course, is, is trademarked by uh, Accuray. But it is, it's all about the positioning and delivery accuracy, which is a, an update replacement to AQA. For the garden fence test, uh, um, right now Accuray recommends the pick and fence test daily. It's only a qualitative test. Um, the garden fence test, again, you've got an attachment uh, to the collimator for that. You have to use two different software solution to get uh, the information and get some sort of analysis. And the uh, garden fence is recommended on an infrequent basis, even though that is the quantitative test. So we highly recommend, and we made the garden fence super easy, convenient to be able to deliver with the stereo checker. Um, and it replaces for us the, the uh, quant non-quantitative picket fence test. Although with stereo checker, you can of course acquire a picket fence test as well. Um, it's capable of detecting leaf variations to 0.2 millimeters. And again, the common setup, you don't have to move the device uh, in order to smoothly go from one type of QA to the next and perform and get your analysis. So with the MLC QA, again, vendor provided, it's non-clinical, um, requires the collimator attachment. Here's, a, here's an image of the picket fence within Stereo um, Checker, the current software release. Again, we take we take we can capture that image and you can look at it instead of looking at film. 
individual beam analysis. So on a monthly basis, you can do um, a single single field analysis, whether that be an iris field, a, a cone, or uh, a square field or rectangular field. You can do that on a LINAC um, as well as on the CyberKnife unit, allowing for some crossover there. Um, so everything that I've shown you in the slides here was a look and feel of version 1.4, which is what would be delivered if you had a stereo checker on order today. We are entering test phase now with uh, version 2.0, which is a complete rewrite of the software with some additional um, features with trending and uh, reporting. Uh, functionality. So that is what we're going to concentrate and show you today because again, if you purchase the stereo check checker today, you may get you will get version 1.4 of the software, but we're getting close to the release of 2.0, which means uh, that you would be getting that automatic update under your first year of maintenance in any case. Hmm. Okay, why? There we go. So to go over to the software. Um, we are going over here. First thing that you notice is that this is a web application. Um, so a very different look and feel. Um, we did one thing off the bat here because we know a lot of people work in low light conditions. So you have a couple of different ways to view. You can either have the white background or the dark blue, which is a little bit easier on the eyes. We organize the software in such a way that what you do most commonly uh, tracks from left to right. So what you're going to do is the daily QA, be reviewing that QA and trending that and looking at the trends for that QA. Monthly is over here letting you know, yep, we have a monthly, do it less frequently. So it's over here. We have a manual QA option. I'm gonna start over here in the settings. Uh, because that is the thing that you're going to do least often, but the but the thing that you do to get everything started. Um, it's very simple with clinic and then machine information that you're putting in. If you identify your machine as a cyber knife and what collimator types you have, it'll automatically populate which tests um, to include. They're all here as green, which means that they're going to appear on your daily menu of items to be QA'd. If there was something you wanted to remove, say the picket fence, because we're not doing any type of analysis, with one click, you can remove that. If you wanna see what uh, the metrics are, of course, you can look at them here. If you wanna view or edit a baseline, no, we're not going to do that right now. Um, we have the, uh, the baseline editor here as well. You have daily tests. We have some monthly tests set up. Very simple to add a test. Um, once you identify what defines your field, what collimator type, then you decide your field size and add it, and that's all that you really need to do there. So very, very simple setup. Um, users, we did add some user types, user role types with associated rights. Uh, so we have the therapist who would be able to acquire QA, but of course not establish baselines. We have physicist versus authorized physicist or phys physics admin. Physics admin has access to all parts of the software. An administrator basically can print reports and also update users. Um, uh, physicist versus an authorized physicist, again, is who has a right to uh, create a new baseline or establish a baseline versus run QA, uh, review QA, run reports type of thing. The panel itself we identify and we provide it with a calibration file, which you're gonna select and apply. Um, and then preferences right now, the only preference we have is what your idle timeout is. It can be anywhere from one to 30, 30 minutes. Uh, different facilities have different rules about website idle timeouts. So you can adjust that according to what you need. So that's what I wanted to show you over there. Over here, you'll notice in the daily QA, that we have uh, tickets per machines that are uh, established for daily QA. You'll notice up here, we've got a little red asterisk and that means I'm in the process of doing QA. If you're in the middle of a set of QA routines, whether they be on the daily basis or monthly basis, um, you need to finish off that QA before you can switch from one to the other. And as you'll note here, it says it lets you know on the machine, this is the one you need to continue. I did that to, in order to save us a little bit of time. So here you, you have the menu that had been selected and set over in settings. 
It lets you know at a glance, I ran this earlier and got an error on this particular um, iris batch, and we can go in and look at that. Um, I ran the fixed panda and it passed just fine. To let you know, the, these all run in the same manner. So we'll run an, an iris panda, gives you an indication to get started, what you need to do for that. Um, just letting you know, make sure that everything is prepped, ready to go. And it's gonna automatically acquire, analyze, and save the images and data. Um, so you don't have to click to do any of those things. Um, and then we do have a difference. So we'll go over and take a peek at that. So just like the software now, um, you'll get that different image. You can look at the current image in the baseline. You get your current shift for all the criteria and a note as to what the alert and error thresholds are actually set at. So for example, the iris batch we have done here, um, it's gonna take it a hot minute to load, uh, but you'll go through the various irises. I totally understand here, you saw a red dot. Normally this button would also be red. Uh, the bug has been up and fixed already. It's just, I haven't updated my version of the software. So forgive us for that. Um, we do have some basic editing tools, just like we do in the current version. If you wanted to zoom in on an image, you can certainly do that. Um, you click to each one of these, get your updated image in your, your current, in your baseline. Nice update that we did to the profile information. Give it a second to load here. It's a little slow. Um, and I'm going to show this in the daytime view. So in the current version of the software, we show you only the average profile. What we do now, though, is that as you scroll through here, you notice that at every five degrees, we have the profile data as well, which is very, very nice. And, you know, it's kind of unfortunate that my, my, um, my baseline and my current images that I'm using in this demo are really the same, so they're on top of each other. But at any point in a curve, you'll notice that on the right-hand side here, you get the information, what is the current, what is the baseline, um, and what's actually happening, happening at various data points. But that default right there is to the average. I think that's a nice update in the software. Um, I haven't run the garden fence yet, so we'll go ahead and run that one so we can take a look at that data. Uh, we did update the whole algorithm um, involved here uh, in order to make it much simpler. Are you going to be nasty on me? It might be. Hang on. Why did it do that? Okay, now we're going to get our results, hopefully. Um, but we we rewrote it so that it is um, much easier. It's looking for the center of the panel, measuring based, you know, measuring those leaf positions based on uh, manufacturer spec and an open field image in addition to the to the garden fence images that are combined here. We have a schematic that alerts you to segment results versus a total leaf result. Hmm. Um, and there, because Accurate does have four criteria that you're measured against. Um, so based on leaf banks, as well as individual leaf pairs, if you click on a particular leaf button, you get the expected current and the, the deviation information for that particular leaf number, which is extremely helpful. Um, we'll hop over here, um, now that you've seen what a couple, of, they all run in the same, the, in the same manner. So when we get to review, which physicists care about, if, especially if a therapist has done your daily QA for you, we basically give a ticket per, per day. Um, it'll give you the summary of the tests that were actually run. Oh, I actually need to go back over here for a quick minute, uh, cause it won't let me show you anything else about the software. Um, if I go in here, once the QA, had, once the tests have been run that you plan on running, you do need to go ahead and finish the QA, put in any notes um, that may be required, any comments you want to make on that. Um, and then it will um, 
move things over to the review QA. It took away that red asterisk, which means it's open to do other types of QA if need be. So as I was saying, these tickets are per day, a quick overview of what's going on. Um, if you have, you know, there are several, maybe you're, as the physicist, as long as you're seeing that it's passing, you're not digging into anything further. Um, everything passed on this machine, I'm just going to be able to do a batch mark off of, of those tests. Um, and then they're removed from the list. Anything, since this is a web-based application, anytime that something is underlined within the software, it means that that's a link to go in and look at uh, more details of, of, a, of the test. So if I'm gonna click over here into this garden fence test, it'll take me back to that information. Uh, again, giving us our leaf position mean offset um, number of leaf deviations and if there's a single leaf error and again that summary information over here. Um, notice as well that we have a couple of new buttons up here to make life easier. We updated the DICOM to be a full image, a DICOM image export should you need that. Uh, we can also print a PDF report from here which will be of the daily acquisition um, and it's in a very nice format so that you can save that in as an electronic file or print out a hard copy um, should you so desire. I think there's too many people in my family on the internet today, sorry about that. Um, so this is very quickly what a report will look like. You scroll through, it gives you a summary whether there, there was an error at the top, the images and the, the average profile is what is actually printed on the report. Um, It'll go through all of the irises, of course, um, and the panda test that we ran, and the MLC tests, and again, that in, the schematic information um, about individual leaves. So that's what that looks like. Um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to show you with the review. And then, of course, you know, you want to know what's going on with the trending. So we've done a full um, trending you get a summary here first about monthly QA, it's looking at the past year. Um, and on the daily QA, it's looking at the past 30 days. Uh, we'll just go into this first one. It'll tell you, this is just a count over the past 30 days. And when the last time there was, when these results were acquired. Um, if you want to go into here, notice that these buttons are properly color coded uh, where there was an alert or an error you get your trending graphs as well as the data over here. Um, those that have been reviewed are marked as such. There may be a day where something gets interrupted, something goes wrong, you re-ran a test. It's, it is possible to say, oh, okay, well, something, I got interrupted, something went, you know, got interrupted in my iris batch. Um, so maybe you have a data point that isn't really reflective of the data for the day. Uh, you reran the report, which is definitely more reflective. You can choose to remove that data point, um, you know, not graph that data point. It still exists for audit records and everything there, but it may be a point you don't want to graph because it'll throw things off for you. Um, and if you click into a, you know, click into each one of them, you're going to get that tabular and uh, graphical display. Again, you can export the data as a, C, a .csv file. You can also export trending reports. Um, one of the other one, and it's got a nice back button for you to be able to go into other things. Uh, the, this was obviously a complex thing to do with the four different tests that Accurate um, is looking at and recommends that people um, test and review. We have bank tests and then we have individual leaf tests. And this looks like a very busy graph, but it is that display that's gonna let you know um, whether anything um, has gone wrong. And then you have the option over here to click either on a day to go in and look at the day's data, or you can go in and you can look at the uh, leaf pair itself and get the X1 and X2 bank data. Um, and again, that tabular data for uh, the date range that you have selected. So that is how that works. Um, I guess that's pretty much all we really needed to go over for that. Um, for monthly QA, you know, it's going to function just, just like 
the daily QA, although in this case, we also have a Linux setup. Um, it's going to show you the menu of, of fields that are available to run. If you don't have a baseline established, of course, it can't do any analysis because it, it doesn't have a baseline against it. It won't actually let you run that uh, QA until you have established a baseline in order to be able to, um, to do the analysis on it. If you're going to, do, so we also have the concept of manual QA in 1.4. I will say it's a clunky workflow, admit to that. So we did a lot to improve that. Um, and on here, again, I'll just go into here. You're going to set some parameters of what it is that you're, um, what type of image you're taking. It is currently the version of manual QA um, because the whole idea of the rewrite in 2.0 is that the functionality existed in 1.4, make it available and better um, in a new user interface that's easy to navigate in, in 2.0, which means that we can acquire images. Uh, we do not analyze them. We simply make them available for a DICOM export so that you can take a look at them in ImageJ or, or something else. Um, so this is where you're gonna you know, say what size, you know, energy and all of those things that get applied to the export file name. You can also edit this file name if you want to, and it'll just export it as a DICOM file for you. I'm not gonna bother with that, but you can, and you can also repeat a test. You'll notice that in each of the areas that you do have the ability to actually repeat tests um, should you want to do that. So that really covers what is going on in Stereo Checker 2.0. Uh, again, with that great look and feel um, that makes things a lot easier on the eyes for, for some people. Um, so now we'll go back over to the PowerPoint as I just have a couple more slides to uh, show you. And then we can wrap it up for questions. Um, so I did want to mention that, you know, we have a long history of developing QA specifically for CyberKnife and for Stereo Tactic. We've been at it for a very, very long time. We have collaborated with Linag vendors along the way and closely with Accurate uh, to develop the Stereo Tactic Dose Verification Phantom, um, the QA slab that really lets you test uh, a serious strong test of the um, target versus avoidance structure how well it can recreate that and deliver that. Um, these are other items that if you're looking to invest in a CyberKnife system, you would certainly want to consider in order to have a complete QA uh, solution for that. Um, we of course recommend our A26 reference class micropoint chamber, the only chamber on the market made of low Z materials, so you get a very predictable response curve. Um, our W2 scintillator, one millimeter resolution. Uh, we have one by one millimeter fiber in here with the Max SD. Again, that's a web interface to get uh, to get your readings for that. When you're doing these, the smallest of small fields for commissioning in QA, you want a device that is doesn't perturb the beam and gives you um, good, reliable water equivalent results. It does have a KQ of one, either the W1 or W2. Um, PIPS Pro, we also have a module set up specifically for CyberKnife since there are two KV panels to, to image and we have the stand to hold the, the Phantom at the correct 45 degree angle. So those are just some of the items we have for Stereotactic QA. If you wanna know anything more about other devices or software products we have uh, or more about uh, for an in-depth view of Stereo Checker 2.0 and what that has to offer, you can certainly email your sales rep at sales at standardimaging.com. You can email me directly if you so desire. And as I mentioned, our W2 scintillator with that marvelous KQ of one and what that offers for people doing stereo tactic QA. Uh, please join us next week um, as we will, I believe it is my colleague, uh, Shannon Holmes, who will be talking about the W2 scintillator and how that fits into a QA program. So from here, I'm gonna open it up, give you guys a hot minute to um, ask any questions that you might have. Um, 
And and I do want to say in the meantime, while I'm waiting to you know give people an opportunity to quickly type something in here to say I very much appreciate you spending your time with me today. I know that we are all very busy and trying to uh, get a lot done with very little time. So I greatly, greatly appreciate your being here today. If you, you know, a question pops up after we close this session out, again, feel free to email me. Uh, I'm very, very happy to help you out. So that's what we're here for. Um, and we want to make um, everything as good and easy and efficient for you physicists out there as we possibly can. So I, let's see, do I have, uh, okay, that's, I'm not sure if I can, I got to expand this to see what's going on here. Um, so the device, I'm not sure if I get this, it says, or on couch, the stereo checker is set up on the couch. And like I said, we've got um, fiducials in there that allow you to use the treatment localization system um, in order to properly align and get your images and, and export those for analysis. Um, much, much simpler setup, uh, nothing that you have to attach to a collimator or anywhere else. And again, it's in a clinical mode. Um, other than that, I don't see any other, oh, hang on. Uh, yeah, so it was a question, is it mounted to the head? No, it's set up on the couch. Um, what about the E2E test? Um, that has been brought up more than once. So as soon as Stereo Checker 2.0 is released, of course, we know once you have software, you don't stop. Um, and that means that there's more development that is going to happen. And one of those things that we will be working on, of course, is looking further into the E2E and what it would take for that. I do believe that I will also need to um, work with our engineering team to create a bracket holder to be able to hold the stereo checker at the angle to, to shoot at the 90 and, and um, one eight, no. 90 and 270 um, sort of angles, cardinal angles uh, for that. So it's on the roadmap. It isn't there yet. Um, okay, this is kind of weird to see if I can, exp you know, cannot expand this from what I can see. So it's a, there we go. Um, How do you determine if the setup is the issue with the results and not the collimators or the MLCs? So again, the algorithm that we have built into this um, is really looking at the physical, you know, the the, the physical specs of a, of the rate, you know, the open field of the MLCs, and we not only do we take those those bands for the the garden fence, but we also take an open field image. The software is looking at the center point of that image, knowing those distances, knowing the image, making sure that things are positioned a lot, you know, um, worked in the algorithm. So it's calculating from the center of the image. So we are, do not have a problem. We don't need extra fiducials or that extra mount into the um into the collimator head in order to get that information. And it's actually a growth out of our PIPS Pro software product, which also doesn't require any fiducials to be able to do uh, MLC leaf position type tests. Let's see. I think that was the end of the questions. Um, does you want to include dosimetry verification? I guess I'd need more information about what you mean by that. If you mean sort of an ion chamber checkpoint uh, type thing, no, it does not. Um, but reach out to me and we can chat more about that. Because again, you know, development continues and we're, I, you know, what comes out in 2.1 is being determined at this moment as we're finishing up 2.0. So that seems to be the end of the question. So again, I thank you ever so much for your time. Wish you all a fantastic morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you may be. And I hope you'll join us next week for Shannon's excellent talk on the W2 scintillator. Thank you every so ever so much, everybody, and have a fabulous day.